Welcome to Fellowship 1-7, a biblical podcast from Child Evangelism Fellowship for the Christian community. On this podcast, we discuss various biblical topics, passages, and truths, and how those truths have impacted the lives of people around the world. I'm your host, Elizabeth Griggs. We're meeting with Brendan Troost again, and we're finishing up our discussion uh, concerning man being made in the image of God and how the fall of mankind affected God's creation. So, Brendan, can you just give us a brief recap of yourself and then of our previous episode? Sure. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I'm... uh the associate director of our Global Partnership Ministries Department. That's our fundraising department, and we work here at the headquarters to raise money for the whole world. And uh, yeah, last time we were on the, I was on the podcast. We talked about, um, we talked about the fall of man. We talked about actually us being made in His image and how it relates to the fall of man. And we talked about boys and girls and and how that affects them. And and sort of in summary, I would say that we looked at how God is sovereign and how man has this desire to be sovereign over our own lives, particularly Mm -hmm. the unsaved individual, but that when we become a believer in Christ, uh, that desire for dominance changes to a desire to fulfill God's plan on earth. And his plan, of course, is that we are to go into all the world and share the gospel. It's the Great Commission. And uh, because of our sin nature, There's challenges to that, but God provides the strength. God provides the power behind any of our words. And we specifically talked about the power that children can have to be missionaries Mm -hmm. um, and how we, they're not just the receivers of the gospel. They're our great mission as child evangelists, but they're actually the doers of this mission uh, as well. Uh, Entrusted by God to go out and to share with their friends and family and people they meet. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, We're going to dive right back in. And we, we touched on man being made in the image of God, man's fall. Um, And then we also have, toward the end of our statement of faith, this reference to being born again by the Holy Spirit. So can you kind of explain to us what that means? Sure, absolutely. And I love talking about the Holy Spirit because it is incredible where we are right now in the history of the world, Mm -hmm. right? Because prior to Jesus dying on the cross, you had people who believed in God, right? And if you're, if this is a new concept to you, this is, this is, fascinating to me that those people walked and went about their day without being filled with the Holy Spirit inside of them on a daily basis. Right. We actually see in scripture that that happens after Jesus dies on the cross. And he says, I have to go, uh, and but I will send you one who will remain with you forever. And that is the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of us. And many people say that begins at the day of Pentecost where that holy indwelling happened, but it happened because Jesus died and created a way for God to dwell inside a sinless man uh, in an intimate way, like he once walked with us in the garden, that level of intimacy, Mm -hmm. and then was separated by sin. So right now, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And I want to talk about this real quick uh, relating to children. Yes. And um, I don't know if you plan to talk about that later, but, (laughs) but I'm really passionate about this one particular topic. So So John chapter 3, verse 6 and 7 reads that that which is born in the flesh is flesh. That's pretty obvious to us. It goes on then to say, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. And so when we think about uh, us going out and and doing missions work, Mm -hmm. um, that's us in the flesh going out to doing something that we're trying to do in the spirit because God has the power, right? Right. Not us doesn't matter how good we are. In fact, the, the scripture says that God's word is to, to confound the wise. So, so here are the children in this equation. So we, we often think about children, like I said earlier, being the recipients of the gospel. But is the Holy Spirit that is living inside those children any different than the Holy Spirit that is in you or me? No. no it's the same Holy Spirit, right? It is, yeah. You know, there's only three parts of the Trinity. There's not a junior Holy Spirit, right? Right. So there's a real, full-fledged God himself in Holy Spirit form living inside these little children. And when they're going out there to talk to their friends and their family, they don't have a lesser Holy Spirit working Mm -hmm. through them. They don't have a a lesser ability to share the gospel or to be on mission or to be full evangelists like us. If the work is done by us, but the power comes from the Holy Spirit, and it's the same Holy Spirit— who are we to say that they are incapable of doing amazing things for the kingdom of God? Right. So we just need to revolutionize the church. 
Hey, you and yeah. me right here, yeah. right now. Let's go. <laughs> we need to we tell the this. world <laughs> <laughs> that these children are not just something that we need to put off in a side room and we're going to get the real business done in the chapel. Right. We need to be training these kids to go out there and to share with a lost and dying world that doesn't understand hope, that Jesus is real, that God loves them, mm-hmm. and that they, if they believe in him too, can have an intimate spirit-led life just yeah. like these kids. Yeah. Well, and I've I've worked with kids for a number of years. I've been in a daycare and public school, and I've been in kids' ministry my entire life. Um, and kids have no filter yeah, either. That's true. So the Holy Spirit is not restricted in that way mm, either. Mm. For adults, we have this mentality of how the world is supposed to be run and how mm. we're supposed to present ourselves and that, oh, we can't do that. That's not acceptable. Right. But a child, I mean, you have a breakout and they come up to you. What is that on your face? <laughs> they don't have filters. No. So God God is has so much not I'm not saying we're limiting God as adults, but we try we tend to uh, limit ourselves, I would say, as adults and being open to the moving of the spirit and kids don't have that. No. Kids just go and do. So, yeah, I mean that's a great point being born in the spirit and um, it doesn't it doesn't just happen to adults. This is something that entirely is possible for children mm. if they believe. Yep. So, yeah. Um, so with that in mind, what do we mean when we say that a new nature, a new life is implemented by the Holy Spirit through the word and is absolutely essential to salvation? Right. So I would say that to walk in the spirit is the method by which a believer should try to live their life. Mm -hmm. We were given a calling by God. Um, and then we often say, well, what, how, how do we live out that calling? You know, many people think, what is God's will for me today? Right. Right. And uh, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day, and they said, I don't know what I want to do for God. I don't know what, what he wants me to be doing. And I said, well, let me ask you a question. Um, have you ever been to a church where there's maybe an older gentleman who is the first guy to show up at the church, usually the last one to leave? He's generally very quiet. He is the guy who's setting up the table, setting up the chairs. We all kind of know one of these yeah. people, right? Yeah. The, the guy who is not assuming, doesn't stand up in front of people, but is always there to serve God in any way possible. Right. Now, imagine that you're in heaven. You've died. You've gone on to heaven. That guy is there. Do you think that because he spent his whole life stacking chairs and doing a quiet work that he's going to have a smaller house than you did because you wrote a book or you preached at a pulpit? No. No, that guy's probably got a bigger house, if anything, right? Because he's <laughs> right. he lived the quiet, unassuming life for God. So when we think, what is God's will for me today? How do I walk in the Spirit? How do I be Spirit-led? And I don't think the answers are the big answers we're always looking for. Right. I think those answers are that we're willing to do the thing that God wants us to do tomorrow. It doesn't have to be an occupation, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be some life change where we throw everything to the wind and we jump in a plane and we go off into the, the, you know, hither and yon to share the gospel. Right. If that's an opportunity and God gives it to you, do it. Be spirit-led. But it also doesn't mean that the things that you do in your life aren't spirit-led if they aren't those big moves, right? Mm -hmm. So we just need to be looking, I think— Um, in prayer for the opportunities God puts in front of us. And the fear can come from abundance or from scarcity. We can be afraid that God has given us big opportunities that are going to shake up our whole life. And we should be afraid if we're looking around and we don't see opportunities. Yeah. Um, Because it's not that God's not giving them to us, unless, of course, we're in sin and God is putting us on the shelf. Scripture does talk about that. we got to get right with God to be able to be in that Mm spirit-led situation. But we just need to be praying and and seeking to live a life that God is wanting us to live, regardless of what it is. Expectations out the door, God at the forefront. Right. It's seeing God in everything instead of trying to search out this big, like you said, this big thing of, oh, I'm up on stage. I'm, you know, Bill Gaither. I don't know why. He pops in my brain. And he's an amazing artist and everything. But um, we don't have to be a Bill Gaither or somebody who is having this huge performance, but just... Like you said, setting up chairs, having a servant's heart, being that servant. Yeah, There's no and, better and, way and God it. gives us specific skills. So if if public speaking is one of them, that's great. Right. But to utilize those skills in every opportunity we have, regardless of what it is, and to be okay with two really good options, and either one works. As mm-hmm. long as we're sharing the gospel, we're seeking to serve God. We're um, and there's many many ways we can do that. Um, uh, ministering to the saints, et cetera, et cetera. But as long as we're willing to do the thing God gives us to do, uh, yeah, I think that is what it means to be 
um, living through a spirit-led life. Uh, and I, I, when it says absolutely essential to salvation, I think that it's impossible for you to be a saved individual and not have those kinds of opportunities. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. So you touched on salvation, and we we kind of go through at the end of this statement of faith, going through this whole list of things that don't attribute to salvation at mm. all. And um, what is your take on that? Why why do we feel like things like baptism or good works don't earn salvation for us? Yeah, and when it comes to baptism and a lot of the works associated that are specifically talked about in Scripture, um, working with uh, orphans, helping widows, helping the elderly. A lot of those things are really great, and there are wonderful ministries out there mm-hmm. dedicated to them. Um, but we really focus on evangelism as it pertains to self. Well, it always pertains to salvation. Right. But um, the outworking of sharing the gospel with people is the core of evangelism. And so that's where we keep our focus as a ministry. Um, uh, we do get phone calls every now and again, even here at the headquarters, from people who say, why don't you baptize children after you lead them to Christ? Well, we really believe that's the work of the church, right? to be helping to lead those children to baptism. But the other part, the other core reason we don't talk about baptism too much in a good news club, one, yes, it's because we don't want to replace the church. We're not trying to replace the church. But two, is because we really want to make it clear that that is not a part of of the requirements for salvation. Mm -hmm. And in fact, even saying the words requirements for salvation is, in my opinion, oxymoronic because there is no requirement from us for salvation. God did the work. Right. God did the work. And and I I love thinking about Alistair Begg in his uh, sermon where he talks about the sinner on the cross and and how when he gets to heaven, (laughs) and this is a loose quote, but when he gets, he says, when he gets to heaven, he's going to get there and St. Peter's going to be at the pearly gates and he's going to say, why are you here? And he goes, oh, I don't know. I, you know, the guy at the, in the middle cross told me I could come. And he says, well, don't you understand all these things about the, what it requires to be saved? Don't you understand propitiation of sin? Don't you understand the, the fullness of uh, the divinity of God on the cross and sacrificed for you. And he's going to say, I don't know what you're saying, man. (laughs) I just took the man on the middle cross said, go that way. And I'm here now, you know, because he did all the work for us. Mm -hmm. And children can understand that. Yeah. Children can understand the simplicity of Jesus died. He took your punishment. You no longer have to take the punishment. Mm -hmm. And now when you, when you go to heaven, when you die, when you get there, all you have to say is Jesus is my friend. That's yeah. why I'm here. Yeah. So it's it's by faith that we're by saved. faith in Jesus, mm-hmm. by faith in Jesus, and not by works whatsoever, not by baptism, and and not to say any of those things aren't a part of the working out of our faith, right? Because there is a daily process now that we're believers, where God is regenerating us, where He's working on us mm-hmm. and strengthening us, and I firmly believe that's so that we can be more enjoyable to Him in heaven, because yeah. He says that He is. Um, like a sword being forged in the fire of trials, we get these trials, we get these growing moments, and that's all very important for us when we get to heaven because once that happens, we're going to be the way we are once we're in heaven forever. I don't know how much change is going to happen in heaven because right. those trials won't exist. Right. If they're necessary for change, there won't be any trials. It's like growing pains. We love those. That's we, what trials are. <laughs> we do here, and we really do when we think that we're we're a, a piece of artwork that's being painted, mm-hmm. uh, and once, once we get to heaven, the paint dries, and it's going to be beautiful and on display for God's glory yeah. to all that's in heaven and all the angels and all of the heavenly beings, us included, to glorify God through the the beautiful scars we have that we gained here on earth. But they have nothing to do with salvation. The scars that right. related to salvation are on our Savior's palms. And those are the scars that are the only ones that matter to salvation. So, I really like the way you put that. The only good work, if you will, that pertains to our salvation, getting salvation, is the good work that Jesus did on the cross. Amen. That... I like that. Good point. Um, yeah, and then we just we see how, you know, our, our faith is grown and our relationship with Jesus grows as we go through those trials and everything, and that's what produces those good works. So, um, all right, well, we are out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. I've, like last time, a lot of new takes on just things that, you know, we've grown up hearing and hearing somebody else's perspective on it and seeing how God has used 
certain scriptures that maybe we've always interpreted one way and he's showing you a different side mm. of it. It's been very insightful for me and uh, I really enjoyed sitting down and talking with you. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, anytime. Uh, if you want to learn more about who CEF is and what we believe, you can visit cefonline.com slash about. This will also be linked in the show notes. Be sure to check out Unite Kids Radio, where we unite kids with the gospel through adventures and foundational biblical truths. Give us a like and subscribe to keep up to date on both this podcast and our kids program. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.